Hey everyone, Chang here and welcome to my channel. Now, the answer to everything in the universe is, there it is. I'm too old for my own good. Anyways, so today I'm gonna focus on multiplication and multiplying very quickly. Now, here's the thing, and this is based on an experience that I had quite some time ago actually now, uh, not even just a few years, quite some years back. Now, this was when I was still in an after school program. Now, the director had, I guess, a family friend who was an algebra student and needed help. They were scoring, at least at that time, the grade was a D and they really needed to boost the grade performance very quickly. So I was there and I offered to tutor the students. Now, when I was tutoring your students, of course, I did the basic diagnostic, trying to figure out, you know, what area is the weakness and then what we can focus on. And after that, what was mind boggling is that basically for the next two weeks, what I did was I drilled the students on addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. And of course, you know, <laughs> it's supposed to be an algebra class. They were worried, like, what are you doing? Why are you drilling them on this? So what I did is I drilled them on that, teaching them any trick I can to make sure that they can do it very quickly, adding very quickly, subtracting very quickly, multiplying very quickly, and dividing very quickly. And in the end, actually, immediately afterwards, they were able to jump their grade from a D to a B. Now, why is that the case? Well, actually, it's quite interesting. The idea of algebra being this mythical thing, very confusing, very mind-boggling thing, is not really the case. A lot of it is built on these four basic operations. And sad to say, when you're working in an algebra class and you're trying to follow an instructor, seeing what they're teaching and go, while they're going through the lessons, the immediate assumption is that you are already very good at arithmetic. So if you're not, then all of a sudden you're not following their step-by-step -step work, right? So all of a sudden it becomes super confusing. You're not able to get the more complicated topic because guess what? You couldn't even follow along when they were doing the most basic of arithmetic. And of course it's a little more challenging because you're working with variables, but the concept is still the same. So of course, since I've already put out several videos, you know, adding from left to right, subtracting from left to right, it only makes sense to tie those guys together and try to make it so that you can multiply and divide very easily with the concept of left to right. So now, today we're focusing on multiplication. That was a very long-winded way of saying that. Now, there are two things that you have to focus on when you're trying to multiply very quickly. The idea is that numbers can always be broken down into 10 plus or 10 minus, right? Now, that makes it very simple. So for example, 42, we just happen to have this lovely number, right, can be broken down into two things. Either 40 plus two or 50 minus eight. Both of these are the same as saying 42. Now, why is that? Because when you're multiplying, and in this case, I'm just probably gonna be focusing on two times one and then we can build on to that, but that's the most basic core concept. Instead of multiplying, for example, 42 by a number, 40 by a number is easy because guess what? The zero itself is just adding a zero at the end of it, right? So for example, let's just look at this really quickly. Uh, 42 times seven, right? Yes, you can solve it basically the same way, you know, two times seven, that's four, one carry over and then do that, all that lo lovely stuff. But if you break it down, for example, to 40 plus two, all of a sudden you can solve it very quickly, right? Seven times 40, well, that's almost like seven times four, which you should be fairly good with, and then add a zero. What's that? That's 280, right? And then all of a sudden you can add 14, which hopefully if you watch the other video, you can add it very quickly, and that right there is 294. That speeds up your computation twofold, if not more, right? So we're gonna use this concept. Now, the other trick is actually to break it by fives because it saves you a lot of time. You don't have to multiply any large number greater than five, you can break it by five. Now, what do I mean by that? Well. For example, if we have 37, right, it's just a lot easier to go higher, since this is bigger than five, right, to make it 40 minus three than 30 plus seven. Because you can multiply whatever number by three, that's a lot quicker than multiplying it by seven. Not saying you can't do it, but it's just a lot easier that way, right? Now, the same thing that if you have something like 32 now, right, Instead of going from the bigger number and subtracting because you end up with eight, you go from a smaller number and yeah, that's just a 30 plus two. Once again, you will just be multiplying by two instead of by eight, which will save you a lot of time. So that's just a little nitty trick, right? So 
there's the thing. Once again, break the numbers down into tens plus some number or 10 minus some number. And when you're breaking it down, base it on the idea of if it's greater than five, go up one and then subtract. If it's less than five, then go down one and then add. So let's put this into practice. All right, so I mentioned 37, 32, so you might as well use it in the next as an example, right? So 37 times eight, 32 times eight. Of course I choose eight because I don't want it to be a small number, you know, make your life a little more difficult. So let's see if you guys can figure it out very quickly. Ready, set, go. One, two, three, four, five, got it? Cool, all right, so if you have it, that's fine. Once again, we're trying to think of a trick to solve this easily. You can always solve it regularly. You know, seven times eight, that's six, and then five over there, and then all that other lovely stuff. Or, once again, you can break it down. Since the number next to the three, right, this one right here is bigger than five, it's always easier to go up and then subtract. So in this case, think of it as 40 minus three, okay? Well, in that case, it's actually fairly simple, because guess what, 40 times eight, is 320, and then eight times three is 24. Subtract, what do you have? 296, just like that, right? This one, this number is less than five, so think of it as smaller adding up, right? So in this case, it's gonna be what? 30 plus two. So, very easily, 30 times eight, that's 240, right? And then eight times two, that's 16. Add those eyes together, 256, right? And now, this is not as quick as we would hope just because I'm writing it all down, but eventually, with more practice, you guys can do this in your head, right? Just looking at it, it's like, all right, immediately, I was like, that's 30 plus two, and then all of a sudden, you have what, 240 plus 16, and then you don't have to write all this down, and you immediately can add it, right? So that's what I'm hoping that eventually, we will get to. So, let's look at some more problems, and immediately, try to solve this. You can write it out if you want, just to build the habit of breaking the numbers down, or you can try to just mentally solve it all in your head. So let's move on to the next example. All right, so we have our next example. We have a 26 times four and a 63 times four. Now, once again, immediately, hopefully you guys are already computing the answer. If not, that's entirely fine, right? We look at this one, for example, and what is that? That's a 120 uh, minus uh, 16, that's 104. So, in that case, I would say this is 104, and the reason for that, the reason I said 120 is because guess what? I'm breaking this guy down. This is 26, that number is greater than five, so immediately I'm thinking 30, minus four, right? You don't have to do it this way, but I found it a lot easier. So 30 times four, that's 120, right? So we have 120 right here. And then of course, four times four is 16. And since it's a bigger minus, right? So this is gonna be 120 minus 16, that's 104. That's how I got the answer for this one. This one is fairly simple. This is a smaller than five, so I'm breaking it up into adding. So in this case is what, two, 240 plus 12, that's uh, 252. So here we go. Right, this one is gonna be 60 plus three, adding. Now, afterwards, we have 240, right, because 60 times four, right, 24 and another zero at the end, that's 240. And then we have a three times four, that's 12. Add those guys together, 252, just like that. Very simple. All right, so here we have it. We have another two examples. 87 times six, that's just basically 90 times six is uh, 540 minus uh, six times three, that's uh, 18, that's uh, 522. So we have a 522 right here, right? And then of course, once again, I just broke this down into 90 minus three because this one is bigger than five. And of course, now you can see it, 90 times six is gonna be 540. And then of course you subtract the six times three, which is gonna be 18. And that's why we have 522. Let's look at this one. This one is less than five. So that's just basically a 90 times eight, 720, 720 plus an eight times four, which is 32. So that's 752, right? There it is. Okay, so once again, we broke it down. 90 plus four, okay? And so, in that case, basically you can see where the 720 comes from, right? The 90 times eight, and then of course the 32, and since it's a smaller adding, there it is, and then we have 752. So, hopefully with a little bit of practice, you guys can solve, at this case, at least for the example that I've shown two by one in mere seconds. All right, so there you have it. That's multiplication very quickly. Now, this one is only a focus on two by one, and of course, I can put on more videos on more complicated multiplication. But the idea is this, 
right? In order to improve our math skills, it's not always the next trick, the next formula, the next complicated topics and all the different theorems and all that other stuff. Sometimes it's going back to the basics. It's refining the fundamentals. So when we improve our addition, our subtraction, our multiplication, our division skill to almost a godly degree where we can do all these computations in our head without having to waste time and write it out, right? We will realize that our math skill will improve drastically as a consequence of it. So hopefully this video is helpful, entertaining at least, and will at least put you in a path to maybe let's rethink on these basic arithmetic again and try to improve on it. Well, thank you for watching this video. If you haven't already, please like, comment, and subscribe. I will see you in the next video.